five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. the hell anyway how are you this evening again uh i uh, have nothing to talk about and i have a half hour to kill so i just may wind up going to the uh citizens panel in a few moments i heard that rob was trying to call uh the citizen panel and he he got the wrong show because it was earlier than he thought it was so hi rob in fact, why don't I just open up the lines and Rob and I can talk if he wants to talk. Hold on a second. This is going to take a minute for us to get the, um, there we go. There's the, oh, see, it says Rob Alfano called, called to Klein. He made it through to the last show. Let me see here. Let me open up the Skype lines. Actually, the Skype lines are always open. That's the problem with the new Skype. It's just that I, I say, uh, do not disturb, or I'm not available, okay? But I am. And uh, we found that out one night when, uh, um, what's his name, RV or whatever his name is, tried to call the, call the program because he saw that I was on. Ah, here we go. Here comes, uh, here comes uh, 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 our old friend Rob Alfano. Wait a minute. Hold on, Rob. Let me let me uh, let me get you a, a little slot here so we can see your your face. There we you, go. You're not uh, going to uh, believe what happened to me. What happened to you? It's embarrassing. Okay, tell us. So I'm watching the Yankee game and they're losing and I'm frustrated by yeah. it, right? So yeah. I was like, I didn't hear last night's ramble, so I go and I tune into the ramble. Yeah. And I heard your whole thing on Dr. John and all that, right? Yeah. And then I heard the call starting, and I heard you guys talking about Apple and yeah. the fork and the 8K and the 4K. And I'm like, I completely, <laughs> I completely forgot that it was a recording. <laughs> I, I opened up Skype and I dialed in, and it was the last minutes of. Oh. Damien show and I'm like what, what, what is going on here yeah. he said you called in in the last minute I thought it was like I don't know I just a senior moment yeah, really well <laughs> um, welcome to senior moments I, you know join me okay here we go alrighty we've been joined by uh, let's see here we should have Charlie Wallace uh, because he was in the slot last night um, hello Charlie you there Huh. Uh, oh, there he is. There we go. Now we'll have him here any second. Now there we go. There's Charlie. Is there? Hey. Hey. So, so Rob, uh, uh, you were listening to a recording and you forgot you were listening to a recording. I dialed in as if it was live. Well, it's good. It's good <laughs> because it sure was a mystery to to poor Damien who wondered why you were calling. Not only were why you were calling because you don't normally call his program. Uh, but also uh, because uh, 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 you were calling one minute before he was going off. He had the theme going. <laughs> I tune in and I hear, I hear the, you know, and I, and I must have looked like a deer in headlights. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, and he, I think he saw that because he started to laugh. Like, you know, I didn't, there was no time. The, the show was over. So I didn't get a chance to make any kind of, uh, uh, you know, I didn't get to explain what the hell, why I was calling with like eight seconds left to go. Yeah. But uh, it's like a senior moment. I, I complete, I started listening. I pressed the button. I pressed play. So I just got caught up in it. And you guys were talking about this stuff. And I was like, well, I got something to say. So I grabbed my headphones and here I am. And I dial in and it's, I expected to be be the ramble and it was the very 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 end well I, i'm glad you called because i had nothing to talk about and now i do see uh because you you there fucked you up go. and charlie was in there early ready to go and uh 
So, uh, and no one else is probably listening right now to see if I'm taking calls. So, yeah, that's, yeah it's early for that. It's early for that. So, anyway, so I'm lightheaded again today. I'm tired. And I looked it up. Why am I tired all the time? And uh, it is a hypochondriac, you never want to go to the internet and ask <laughs> why right. you're tired. Because I could have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I could have a heart condition, okay? Or it could be allergies, you know? But I've been tired for like a week. And everybody else has been complaining about the same thing, so I guess it's not me. And then I'm imagining chest pains, okay? Now, you know, yeah. chest pains for heart attacks are rather profound. It feels like there's an elephant on stomping on your chest, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Me, I just, it's heartburn, you know? Eh, I just... I, I'm just I I'm I, so I come on here and I go now I've got to do a half hour and I've got to talk about stuff and I'm tired. Now I don't seem tired, do I? I seem animated no. and and so on. But inside I'm falling asleep. Uh, by the way, I'm going to the theater tomorrow. Oh, yeah, to see to see To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, ah, classic. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the play with, uh, what's his name from, ne uh, from, uh, uh, newsroom. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, Marjorie managed to get tickets for it for her and her friends and me. Cool. So, so we're, we're all going to the theater tomorrow. But the thing about the theater is I'm afraid I'll fall asleep while it's on. What time is the show? Uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, you'll be all right. <laughs> well, no, but here's the story, the thing. I find whenever I go to a play, I fall asleep. Now, I don't fall asleep in movies. I don't fall asleep, you know, uh, you know, just watching television. But I fall asleep at the theater because there's something about the lighting that's mm. kind of like it's not really lighting, you know. It's not profound lighting, so it's not bright. And it's kind of dim lighting. Uh, and so I, I don't know. I hope I don't fall asleep. I could never fall asleep in a Broadway th movie theater. Yeah, it's just either. so damn uncomfortable. Cause, well, that, that's <laughs> the other thing I'm not looking forward to is all these seats in these theaters. Yeah, are they, just, were built for, they, they were built for tiny little people, I guess. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. Uh, let me see here. Let me uh, bring in uh, yet another person here. There's Jason, ladies and gentlemen, who has joined our little band of merry people. By the way, there's no Phil tonight. It's a Phil-free night again, mm. uh, which that, that means, uh, Scott, give us a call. Tom Yamaguchi, the coast is clear. You know, these are people who don't call whenever Phil is on the program. Scott, basically, because he feels it gives him a heart condition. So... <laughs> But uh, anyway, so we're going to go to the theater tomorrow, and I'm, lo I'm looking forward to it, you know. Uh, 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 but here's the story. The play got nominated for Best Actor, Best Script, a uh, whole bunch of stuff, but not Best Play. And, and neither did Network, the other biggest play on Broadway right now. And I can't figure out why. Well, how do you get... And they do this with movies, too. How do you yeah. get, you know, best actor, best director, best uh, screenplay and all that, or, or best script, and, and then all of a sudden uh, you don't give them a nomination for best play? Wow. What's that all about? Yeah. So, anyway, it's, that's, that's that. And uh, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll go see it, and hope, uh, I hope it's good. I hope it's really good. It probably will be really good. So, oh. what do we do? We lose we Jason. Just lost Jason. We Jason, lost Jason. Yeah. Well, he'll call back. Plus, he he then gets frozen in his spot, so I don't yeah. have to do anything about it. But uh, anyway, so what's new in your life, Rob? Nothing. Uh, it's been just. I've been feeling tired too. I and and I've been like last night. I went to bed so early. Every night I've been just. I don't know what it is. By the end of the day, I don't have any energy to do anything. I'm just exhausted, and I fall asleep early. Yeah. It's weird. I've I'm, never been I'm exhausted that. an hour after I wake up. 
<laughs> That's how it's been with me here. Uh, you, it's you not s- that bad for me. I'm good all day, and then at night I just I, I sit and watch the ball game, and then I'm like just blah. Could it be I'm 79 years old and that's what this is all about? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure to a to an extent, absolutely. You, you're still going to the gym? Yeah, I, I went twice this week. Okay, well, that's twice more than I've been. Yeah, I went twice and I'll probably go, I don't know, Sunday, I'll go again, give it a try. You know, I, I'm not, I, 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 I stopped going as much as I was because I was getting sick of it and I didn't want to get sick of it. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, I mean, I, I, don't know, I just pedal on the cycle and then I leave. You know, I do 25 minutes on the, on the cycle and I go. But maybe I should do some other stuff, you know, lifting stuff or whatever. But anyway, so what happened? To, yeah, what that's happened? how you hurt yourself. Gee, we did lose Jason, didn't we? Hmm, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Let me see here. Do I have him on the list here uh, so I could call him back? There he is. I will try calling him back. And let's see what happens here. Uh, So we're calling Jason back. Uh, Who knows if he'll answer? Uh, He may have had some problem with his computer. And he's uh, Jason unavailable. I bet he's rebooting his machine. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Every now and then that happens to me. So listen, how many of you have ever wanted to go to the space station? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You never wanted to, Rob? What? Why? Uh, I'm not a pioneer. This isn't a matter of being a pioneer. This is now tourism because yeah, yeah. Well, that's still yeah, a little bit too dangerous. I, 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 I'm still, you know, grappling with flying to Miami. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> you're going to go up in a rocket and G-force and all that. You don't know how your body's going to react to all that. Well, NASA is re- opening uh, the lab, the International Space Station. Uh, for private astronauts, Ooh. Uh, as well as commercial companies. It said it could include film crews, for instance, who could be allowed to make ads or whole films in space. Uh, the first space tourist could head up to the ISS in 2020, NASA said. The plans allow private companies to lease out time on NASA's part of the International Space Station. I guess NASA is running out of money or something here. Yeah, that's what I was sitting here thinking. Yeah. Is this a way to bring money in? But boy, you you better have some insurance. Yeah, and it it uh, I it, does it say how much it's going to cost? Uh, it's I'm sure it's going to cost a bundle. Uh, no, it says a variety of companies starting to offer the possibility for tourism. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it can be too. too Two of those short. Well, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. So, what do you think? What do you think the physical requirements are going to be for someone to have to, to, to be able to qualify for that? Well, I don't know. Uh, but uh, here's part of it: you're probably going to have to pay the Russians something to get you up there. Yeah, because we don't have a vehicle right now. We don't have a vehicle right now going up there, and they don't have one planned for the near future. The only thing there's they, no private. There's well, no private. Well. Um, you know, SpaceX has been delivering stuff to the space station, so I suppose it could deliver people, but SpaceX has never had a manned space flight. Oh. Okay? They've only had equipment and things like that that they send out. So I don't know if they want to take the risk uh, of, uh, see, he's feeling like I am. Well, I'm telling you. I have an idea for this show tonight. Why don't we just all go to sleep <laughs> while we're yeah, here? We would, except it's only 7 o'clock here. Oh, my, new, my new thing now is I tell uh, uh, the, I don't want to say it too loud, Alexa. I tell Alexa to play storm sounds. And I go to sleep to storm sounds. And it's so soothing and nice. Every night, storm sounds. Wow. So play some storm sounds. We'll all go to sleep. <laughs> Echo, play storm sounds. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. No, that's what? not it. it. It it that's not it. I, I think you have to enable the, the skill because no. they're gonna play a cut that's gonna go for three or four minutes and it'll run out. Yeah. This is storm sounds, it never runs out, it go I have to stop it in the morning. Let me see. Let's see if we can hear it here. Well, I don't hear it. Echo? Stop. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know what that was supposed to be, but 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's thunder and lightning and rain, and it's awesome. I've got uh, wow. the second generation. Uh, you know, it's got a much nicer uh, sound than the first generation in my bedroom. And boy, oh boy, it, it just sounds so good. And boy, it just it lulls you off. Mm. I really look forward to it. And that's yeah. my, my wife's sick of it. I'm like... I always listen to the radio to go to sleep because I have. Do you have tinnitus. any of the? Do you have any of the video versions of of, of uh, Alexa? No, no, I don't. Because I do. I have the uh, show, and then I have the little ball that I have at the side of my bed, which I use as a clock radio. And she gives me the time, and you know, uh, anything else. If I want video, I can ask it for like Reuters news and things like that. And, uh, but I'm really getting to like it. What? Oh, here, here we go. Here's Jason. Hold on a second. I wonder what happened to Jason. There we go. Are you there, Jason? Yeah, freaking uh, update thing was popping up, and I went to hit the dismiss, and another one popped up at the same time and moved the box, so I hit restart now. Oh, is this the, the one for re <laughs> restarting the uh, PC, right? Yeah, well, I'm not uh, on the Apple, but... No, I know, so. but a PC, you're lucky with the PC because you're right, you're back here now after it upgraded, right? Yeah. Yeah. With the with the Apple, it takes a fucking hour. Oh, mine is an Apple. I got a, oh, a oh, really? Airbook. Oh, really? It, it, it just must not have been, you know, it wasn't a big update, apparently. Well, the one I did the other day did it pretty fast, but I figured it was the, the trash can I have here, you know. Uh, I have uh, the upgrade to the new uh, iOS, but I can't do it because I don't remember the password to my computer. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> so it just keeps on popping up. I can't remember the pa You know, you, there are certain things you should write down. I have everything written down except for that password. I keep on meaning to just take it to an Apple store and be like, hey, what do I do? I think there's a way of doing it without... Uh, I think I think there's a way of doing it without uh, being able to change it without that. I, I, do you have two-step identification? Uh, Two-factor identification? Because what it'll do is it'll simply ask you, uh, you know, send you a message, and then you put in the numbers, and then I've it done lets so you many in. different things on here. Like it shows my wife's uh, iTunes account. And so she sat there and reset her iTunes account password. We tried putting that in. It says it's not right. And then I've tried mine. I tried logging hers out and logged me in, and it's not. And then there was a well, password that we made for the computer itself when we originally got it, and that's yeah. what well, I need. It's, well, it's, somebody, that's, it's different. Yeah. From, you do. You need the password for the computer, which is different from your iCloud password. Yeah. Or your, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I keep them all the same. Um. My, a my, Apple, way, my Apple my Apple password is the same as my iTunes password. Yeah. The thing is, but I, every time I unlock, every time I lift my, the lid on my MacBook, I have to sign in. I guess you didn't set yours up that way. No, I just I open it up. It's open. Yeah. No, I, I have to sign in. Yeah, I don't. So I, that's how I remember the password because yeah, right. <laughs> well, you can you can have it stop doing that. Yeah, but I like that it locks. You you do? Oh, okay. I like that uh, that. Uh, control you know that you get the put in your password before you launch it because especially I, if I, you take yours out of the house mine just sits in one spot you know if, if i ever took mine out of the house i'd want it that way too i don't give a shit if somebody wants to get into my computer i really I, don't give a shit you know I, go in there steal my life and now you can have no life you know <laughs> <laughs> i borrowed that joke from bubbles uh but it, you know i mean it, it's 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 true. I don't care. You know, they say, oh, you." what I hate are the fact that companies are always asking me to upgrade my password. Oh, you can't sign into certain websites. Um, the other day I tried to log into my uh, OptumRx. Every time you log in, they're going to text you with a code. Yeah. yeah. It, it's like, come on. Every every it's no longer simple. It's always like, here's my password, and it's a, it's a pretty cryptic password. Mm -hmm. Are you telling me that now I still got to put in an eight digit code every time yeah. I use it? Pain in the ass. Well, I have a Vanguard account, okay, and I also have a four hundred one k account with Prudential, okay, and um, when I sign in, sometimes it'll go, oh, well, we want to send you a code. Yeah, we don't recognize this computer. Yeah, and that's great. Yeah. That's terrific. The only problem is, 
the person who gets the code is my business manager. Yeah. So now I've got to call him and say, did you just get a code? Or maybe he's in Europe and I can't even get a hold of him. Oh, that's not good. How come you don't get the code? Because the account is in his, at his address, at, at an address that, it, you know, it goes to him. It goes to his email or whatever, you know, oh. or to his phone number. Uh, and, and so the, I have a problem that way. Then if he can do it, uh, well, you have to have a capital letter, at least eight letters, and yeah. Uh, yeah. and and something else, you know. Yep. Uh, and There's and I, maybe maybe symbol, maybe capital. I maybe I just want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I don't give a shit. Okay. <laughs> Password one. Yeah. I, th if I don't give a shit, you shouldn't give a shit. Oh, but yeah, we're, we care about your security. I don't care about my security. Except that they may be liable. Right. If if you lose money, then you're going to be liable. But if they don't make it strong, then they they're liable. They do it with my fucking Apple account. You know, I, I they I'll ask for a new password. I'll put in a new password, and I'll go. What I'll do is use the password I used a year ago, and they say, "No, you already used that one." Yeah. Well, yeah. You, uh, the last five or seven, you can't do. Right. I have. I just took training this week because we get com company vehicles, right? So every quarter. There's another training that we got to take. This time it was, uh, you know, like don't tailgate. This is what you do. Blah blah. This stupid shit. And every time I log into that site, the password needs to be changed because that's how they have it set. Like every three months, yeah. so you never log in a second time with the same password, and they don't let you use the last five or six or seven passwords. Pain right. in the ass. Right. And right. who cares? It's the stupid. Now you, where you don't really care is the stupid driver's site that we go to to take this training yeah. why does that need to be so damn secure there's nothing there except for these dumb courses that we have to yeah. take yeah but they, they, they they're so worried about my fucking security i am not worried about my security so fuck off uh, that's why i just can't wait till everything is facial recognition <laughs> you know log in my account boom scan my face yep it's me well i mean i've got facial recognition on my iphone it works great and it works great yeah. But uh, every now and then it says, well, we don't want to use your face. Put in your password. Yes. It's like, but I used my face so long I'll I tell don't you, remember. Want me to tell you the yeah. one that really got me? Uh, I had a bank account in the United States, and I had a seven-letter password. All right? So now I go to Europe, and I can't get the fucking thing to work anywhere. And I need money. I especially needed money because this is when girlfriend had a problem with her back and whatever, and we had to go to hospitals and so on. And then I had to give money, and I couldn't get money. And what it was was in Europe, all the passwords are only four digits, four four numbers, four mm. numbers and whatever. And here you could do eight or seven, and so my password wouldn't work anywhere because I couldn't go past the four digits. Hmm. You know, well, well, they finally figured that one out here in the United States and now I think every password for your ATM is four digits. If I'm not mistaken. Mine's longer than four. Is it really? Really? Yes. Well, well, I go to Bank of America and they're cheap. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so anyway. Yeah, my so, credit union sticks. It Really? Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this. I'll take my chances. I don't care if somebody steals my password, okay? How come? Le because I just don't give a shit. There's I so really much don't. of it. There's so much theft. You yeah. know something? You, you know something? Care. Without without, uh, without even uh, uh, worrying about my password, I've had my, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've been compromised. Yeah. You know, I've had to get a new credit card or a new uh, whatever just because of some silly little thing. And it had nothing to do with the password. You know, it had to do with somebody was able to crash the bank and whatever. I just found out, I, you know, I've been, every six months my, uh, my uh, um, uh, what do you call it, urologist sends me to go get a PSA test. It keeps going up and up and up, which, you know, means I have cancer. So anyway, keeps going up. And I go to this place called Quest Labs. Uh, I don't know how many of you have used Quest yeah. Labs, but you probably yeah. have in your lifetime because it's probably the number one. Well, yeah. did you see what happened with Quest Labs? 
something like a hundred million passwords were compromised. Oh right. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. So you know what that means, right? If you use the same password for Quest as you use for other things, mm-hmm. now they've got your passwords. So well, they don't why. know that. You know. But that's what they, that's what they, they assume. assume. Yeah. Right? That's what, exactly what they assume. Well, the trouble and for is a lot that of people it's true. Mine is not the same as uh, as Quest, even though I use my most common one at Quest because so all I don't the have o- a most common one. Because Every place is different. At all the others I've had to change because they just wanted me to change it. You know. Right. So I don't I used to have a common one that I used for like all banking was the same and all this was the same. And since I've gotten one password, I've one password tells you tells me when I log in and I see a password it says caution this is used in five places and then I went in and I spent the time to actually go and let let one password generate passwords for me for all these sites and I changed them so now every one of my site every one of my passwords to important sites is like 16 digits capital letters well, lowercase well how do you remember all, them you don't i yeah. just i have one password on every device i own and it, it works like on my iPhone. Mm-hmm. I look at it. One password uses facial recognition. So when I go to a website, I just and I, and I it I, and I will go to type in my password on the bar there where you would type. It says password. I click it. It looks at my face and then it knows which it knows which website I'm at because it's listed in one password. It auto fills everything and I'm logged in. How much does one I, password cost you? It's a cup. It's like there's a it's a subscription. Uh, situation now and it's I don't know what it is per month it used to be where you bought it per device but now they do a subscription based model and so your one password you get this vault and uh, and you get this secret key and so every new device you get you have to just you use your camera and you take a picture of the what do they call that square thing yeah. and it automatically sets up the vault for you so that on your iPhone on my Mac on my work computer on my computer that's got to be blown up in the studio upstairs all of it has one password on it yeah. and wherever I am I have my passwords if I'm if I'm in front of a computer I have one password so I'm never I don't I don't know any of my passwords they're, they're except the vault password the main vault password obviously you need to now, have suppose, an authority suppose, taking control of and you suppose, and you're volunteering suppose that one day you decide I don't want to pay them anymore well then you would need to keep <laughs> I would you would print out those passwords you can print it if you want you would print out all those passwords <laughs> And then you would probably want to change them because you wouldn't want to be typing in A, Q, exclamation, hashtag, four. Yeah. You, know, you wouldn't want to do that. So and would... what happens on the day that we see that headline in the newspaper, one password compromised? Crashed. Well, well then you'd have to go in and uh, you'd have to go in and change it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You'd yeah. have to go in and change But I'll tell you what. You're not going to crack these passwords that the system. Oh, changed. I'm. Uh, uh, well, maybe not. You know, but who knows? You know, we, you know, you know we, what we're doing is we're paying money to these people to make us secure. And then at some point we find out they have no idea how to be secure themselves, you know. So. To a degree, you're right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah to, you're right. But you, you can't just have like, you know, Teddy Bear 12 is your password. And Oh, damn it. Now you knew what my password <laughs> was, right? <laughs> damn it. I, I got to tell you a funny story. Uh, we used to have a, a show here. Uh, what's her name? Miranda. Remember Miranda? Yeah. 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 Miranda Janelle. And uh, uh, <laughs> we were talking one night on the air. I was talking to her uh, on her show. And she said, well, you know, she says, uh, uh, I'll bet your password is. And she nailed it. Uh, almost nailed it. Not completely. There were a couple of n- numbers in it, and she didn't get those. And I went, how'd you know that? She says, that's the most common password in the world. I'm not going to tell you guys what it is, because I'm still using it. And she would know. Yeah, yeah she, she was in that know. business. You know. That's right. Uh, and, but I, I thought, that's spooky. In fact, I called her after the show. I said, how did you know my password? And she says, oh, that's the, one of the most common passwords around. And, and the only reason I ever used it is because it went back to the days when I had a website 
and it had something to do with that website. Uh, but and I've kept it. I've kept it down for twenty years, and hardly ever has it been compromised. Probably because everybody looks at it and goes, well, that can't be the password. That's too fucking easy. <laughs> password one. Now one with a one hashtag symbol sign, this, that, blah, blah, baby, four, seven, nine, two, three. That one's a password. You know? <laughs> but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's not a password. Nobody would. What kind of moron would use that? <laughs> Most yeah. systems today won't let you do that. They, no, they detect yeah. that and and will not allow it. They'll tell you. Well, they how dare it. they not allow me to use the password I want to use? Okay. Well, they have to think about it from a from a legal perspective. Uh, you know, everything now is HTTPS and what is it, 256 uh, K encryption, Des whatever the hell you, it is. You want to know what I? I you, you, you do know. They spend a lot of money on this. They're not going to want you to use one, two, three, four, five, six. A couple seven. of years ago, I paid a couple hundred dollars for about three years of having uh, Gabnet.net, a secure site. Mm -hmm. So it's an HTTPS. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, if you go to our, my site, as it comes up, it's HTTPS, and then also it goes to HTTP with an exclamation mark. You know why? It's a certificate thing. No, I have it's the certificate. certificate. But, like, for instance, I have the RSS files come up there so that you get the on-demand. All right? Mm -hmm. That compromises, supposedly, the system. Oh. Because the HTTP, H, the... That is coming from a non-secure site. Right. So what am I paying 250 bucks for three years for? Yeah, you, you don't know? need that. I mean, uh, if you're taking credit cards on the site, which would yeah. be nice, yeah. then you need that. Well, they, they told me at GoDaddy that there was, it was going to come a day when uh, 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 Google or whatever was going to put up a red flag every time it found a non-secure site, you know. And I don't think that's true, actually, to tell you the damn truth. But I did I it, and say, I felt fine. I had that HTTP. They smell the sucker. And then also, <laughs> if you, if you, another way I did it is if you turned on the audio stream on the on the GabNet site, that made it insecure mm -hmm. because it's coming from a non-HTTPS site. So I called. Uh, I got a hold of. I wrote the people over at. Uh, uh, the uh, Bosscast, where we do the serving, and I said, "When are you going to go to HTTPS?" Oh, probably never. Well, then you know, if I try to feed my live sound onto my site, it loses its secure status. It, it, it does have a sign coming up or a little thing you can click on and see that it is secure for most things, but you know, yeah, fuck it, you know. I mean, I'm just tired of all the security shit, you know. It's the world we live in. Let's, yep. let's be very honest, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a world in which everybody's out to get you. Now, the one thing they said they've done now, did you see what they passed uh, the, the other day regarding robocalls? Cell phones. Yes. The cell phones. They've said that the phone companies can now block them. Supposedly, they couldn't block them before. And now they can but block them. There's nothing in there about that. They can't charge you for that service. Though. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why it's being held up right now. The, 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 that's why Congress is holding it up right now, because there is nothing exactly what you said. There's nothing in there that says they can't charge you. Congress is saying you need to make it so that you don't charge people for it. Wow. But they can turn it on like that. It's what are they going to charge us for it? Yeah, well, how do they know that it's it's a robocall? They do because they use the same kind of heuristics that spam, email spam uses. Mm -hmm. And so they can tell based on, uh, you know, I don't, really don't know. Well, but how, much email, using, how, how much email spam gets through to you? Well, but think about how much, you know how much spam doesn't get through? <laughs> <laughs> It causes major spam email. I used to run a spam gateway at one of my jobs. We, I had managed my own spam gateway before I decided it's too much work. Let me off. So what we did is we pointed our MX record from our gateways to 
uh, you know, there's mm -hmm. a couple of Google does it and other yeah, other spam that. gateways up there. So we moved our MX records to them. Let them let them take all of our incoming email, and then spam filter it and then send it to us, right? So we put them in the loop. Do you know how much internet access? How much we we saved on how much shit was actually hitting our firewalls? It's a it's ridiculous how wow. much spam that they take care of. Wow. Well, I mean, uh, I I do still get spam. I mean, I get it in my spam folder. Yes, you get yeah. some. But what's interesting is, you know where the majority of the spam it comes from? Russia. My Apple account. Really? Yeah. They, they hit that Apple account like crazy with spam. And mm -hmm. I don't know why Apple, this wonderful company who can come out with a $6,000 starting point for a machine can't somehow figure how to stop that kind of spam from even happening at all. And a lot of it is stuff where they say they're Apple and give us your, your number, you know, your security number and everything. And I'm going, this is going right through Apple. They know it's going right through Apple. They know it well enough to be spam and put it in my spam folder, but they don't know well enough to block it. Either that or they don't want to be bothered with the cost. Well, uh, uh, Apple? Yeah. They don't mind, you know, because people don't bitch. Hmm. So maybe it's like, well, you know, we don't want to be bothered with the cost, so we're not gonna we're not gonna do the all the work. Well, of uh, yeah, I, yeah, I would think I would think crap. this wonderful company called Apple would want to do everything it can. To, he, you know, Tim Cook comes up with these speeches about how we're doing everything to protect you from you know fraud and this and that, and and, and you know, I I don't get it. I watched that uh, WWDC. Yeah, I did. Halfway I, through it. I did too. Well, I uh, that the WWDC folks is uh, the it's not it's not World Worldwide War. Developers Conference. Worldwide it's, Developers uh, Conference, and and yeah. they 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 always hold it in, in uh, uh, near Apple down in Silicon yeah. Valley. So how's it a Worldwide Developers Conference? You think they'd hold it in France or something like that? You know, but they that's this is where they showed us. Excuse me, folks. See, I'm bald. I, this is my new haircut, by the way. This is the I don't give a shit whether I'm going bald haircut. Uh, <laughs> At this point, you're past giving a shit about it. Yeah. You yeah. are. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Okay, so um, uh, they they hold this thing, folks, where, where they uh, Apple shows all the new stuff they're doing. You know, the new software, the new hardware, and so on. And this thing was involved with that. This was this oddly enough is a little more boring than the normal conferences because it, it is for the technical people. Okay, uh, and uh, hold on a second, let me uh, get uh, Jeff in here. Um, uh, it, it's held for for the um, uh, for the uh, uh, you know the the, the the people who are working their asses off trying to uh, so uh, on trying to create Jeff new stuff. Jeff audio on. Uh, uh, do you have your audio on there, Jeff? No. The normal conference. Hear it now? It, it is for yeah. The yeah, but you, we can hear. I'm off town with uh, uh, and uh, off time. Uh, Let me uh, uh, get to uh, Jeff in here. Uh, 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 it it's yeah. for, for the. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sounds like you have So you could just hit mute and then. Hit mute. What are you getting it from? We're, it's well, it's got to be a, a web browser or something. Yeah, it's a web browser that's open. That he was, but, but, go on, Pam. You can do it. You can do it, Pam. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's doing. Oh, you're off. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm on now. Yeah, but somehow he's got the audio from the show going through. Yeah, and, and it's probably an open browser. It's an open browser. Fire. Yeah, it's now it's quiet. Now we don't have it. Wait a minute. No, it's still there. No, it's still, still there. You just started up pause. again. So you can hit mute and then do it. If he hits mute, then he won't hear us. Oh, you, can do, you can do it, Pam. You know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Is there a browser open, Pam? Just, yeah, but just, just this one, just the, the YouTube. The or just the oh, YouTube? Close YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, on you're on Skype. Skype. You need you're on Skype. You don't want to be on YouTube. Okay, we dumped. That's why. Okay, okay. that's there it. There. Thanks, Pam. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, 
Boy, you're lucky you married a younger woman, Jeff. <laughs> no. I'm not gonna argue with that. I can argue with that, right? Um, so, uh, uh, where were we? Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, we're talking about uh, yeah. Yeah. So they they release all this new stuff. They're gonna. The big deal is, hey, we're gonna do the. Uh, uh, we're gonna do a, a big deal here. We're gonna bring out the new Mac Pro. Now the Mac Pro I have here is called the trash can. And I gotta tell you, I, they, people said, oh, that would never was a great machine. That was not their best machine, you know? And I'm going, I love it, you know? It's powerful, it does what it has to do. Uh, my life has been better for it, nothing wrong with it. But they went ahead and they, uh, they've coming, they're coming out with a new one. Now mine, fully loaded, fully loaded with everything you can get for this thing, which I have in here can come to about $8,000. I got it for $3,300 because I got it off eBay and then it broke and then Apple fixed it and fixed it for free. And finally they replaced everything in the, in the trash can. And now I've got an almost brand new machine and I love it. But this new one starts with stuff you can get actually in a cheaper iMac, okay, for five six $6,000. Now that's hardly that's that's that that's not a prosumer machine anymore. That's a professional machine. Absolutely, they're going after the Plex, the um, uh, what do you call it? The professional television stations that you notice. You notice one of the sponsors. A lot of the sponsors, Avid was one. Mm -hmm. They're getting ready. Not sponsors, but they're the ones who are buying into this. Yeah. It's way faster. You know what happened? Is the professional when. In television, it used to be always Mac for graphics, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it kind of switched to the Windows world for a while, and Mac is trying to get back in there. Mm -hmm. And so they came up with this real high-end device, and that's mm -hmm. what they're—they're they're not coming after the home consumer for those machines. Well, they—they uh, they certainly aren't going to get me. That's for damn no, sure. No, they're not. They're not going to get anybody unless you're making money doing video. Mm -hmm. They were talking about how how they're going to how you can render mm -hmm. multiple. I mean, I don't know very much about all this stuff, but I was listening to them talk about it. And they were saying how you no longer have to uh, to break the streams or whatever it was. Yeah, it put an end to some process where mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, I guess movie companies and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so you know this this machine is just you know well you're, the audience is you're not going to be able to see this the audience will but I have a new little thing in in my uh, iPhone uh, that's called NDI um, what is it NDI Cam and it allows me to use m my uh, video uh, my switcher and and use the iPhone as a camera. Okay, now you won't be able to see this, but this is the trash can, folks, in case you want to see what the trash can looks like. There we go. That's the trash can. This thing, well, right there. See, they call it the trash can because it looks like a trash can, and I was thinking for a while that if it didn't, uh, if they didn't get it fixed properly, I was just going to put some dirt in the top of that thing and put a, some plants in there, you know. But that thing... That was their last one, and that is, believe it or not, a good little machine, you know? Hold on a second, let me turn this off, so I don't need to uh, Ooh, have it. What? Uh, I just got uh, the 30 second delay, so uh, I can see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, people are seeing it here. Yeah, that's the trash can, it, it, and it's a great little machine. Uh, you know, I have, no, uh, I have no argument with it at all. You know, I've enjoyed it. Okay. The new one looks like the old one, the cheese grater. Yeah. Yes, well, that's what they did. They went back to making it look like a cheese grater, but even more so. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, even with the little handles on top, it looks like the handle on the top of a cheese grater. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, okay, we get the joke, guys. But you know what people say? This is strange. Uh, you know, for years I was using the cheese grater here in the studio. Uh, the only reason I had to go to this was because I needed more power because of just, you see the picture now and what I put on there. Each of those pictures has to be generated and placed in the template and, and so on. And that takes up a lot of computing power, okay? And I needed a machine that wasn't gonna breathe heavy, but that old cheese grater was breathing heavy. 
uh, and for good reason. It was not as powerful a machine. But supposedly, you can take the old cheese graters and put new parts in them and bring that up to being a machine almost as powerful as this Mac Pro that I just showed everybody. Oh. Uh, and, and you can do it. it, it the, if I want to replace the CPUs to get a more modern P CPU that will be faster and stronger and 12 core, it only costs about 600 bucks to install that in the old computer. And it's only a matter of just sliding it right in. You just got to buy it. That's that's the biggest part. Of it. Six hundred per processor? No, six hundred dollars. It's five hundred dollars for the two CPUs that are there. Okay, and then there is the memory chips, and right. you can fill all those slots with sixty-four gigabytes of memory, and then that that brings it up to six hundred, and just shove that thing in there, and you've got yourself a real powerful machine. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 uh, it it really is is uh, uh, what, what I'm thinking of trying to actually upgrade one of my cheese graters and see what happens, you know. But I got to tell you, I, I this this new machine that they've got out, it's only an eight core for that price. I've got a twelve core here. All right, I've got it has a, what thirty two gigabytes of memory. Uh, in in that uh, six thousand dollar configuration, I've got sixty four gigabytes of memory. Uh, I can go on and on. It has a much more powerful graphics board in here than the graphics board in that six thousand dollar machine. And if you get yourself an iMac, the highest iMac that you can buy, which is about four grand, yeah. it has the same computing power as this bottom line new cheese grater. In fact, it has more power than the bottom line new cheese grater. So, what are they selling? What, why, you know, why aren't they price, they're pricing themselves uncompetitively against themselves? No, because they're going after business who's going to go after the bigger machine, and 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 they're they're not going to go for a consumer thing like a like a, an iMac or something like that. They're going to go you, after that high end oh, machine. Okay, but how many of those are you going to sell? to companies uh, who would have bought, if you brought out just a prosumer, they would have bought it if it was better than the old one. What I'm saying is, how many people, because here's what happens. They're going to buy it, all right? This was the argument I saw online uh, today. People are going to buy it, and, and um, they're, they're not going to want, uh, this new machine is upgradable, okay? So they might buy the base machine and then just upgrade everything themselves within it and say, Maybe. fuck you, Apple. So they well, may, you're, so you're they, still going to have to buy the stuff from Apple. Okay. Right? Well, not all of it. Well, they, then you're going you, to lose your warranty. No. No, because it's, uh, got, no, it's got PCI slots, and you can put in your own display cards. You can, but if you want Apple support, I know with our equipment, if you, you can go and buy. It's got PCI slots. You, you start putting in third-party equipment that you put you put in, you have a problem. Now you call me for support. I I look at your configuration that I know about, right, because you bought it from me. Yeah. And I say, well, that's not our card. That's not, sorry, you're going to have to get support somewhere else. Uh, a lot of these cards are okayed by, by Apple, believe it or not. Yes, Jason. So, but, you know, even with them making these machines and being this expensive, how far off are we from just... You don't even need a machine. You just have a gateway or whatever to access the internet, and you do everything. You know, your storage is online. Everything's in the cloud. You're never going to get the not case. with video. If, well, if you're, if that. if you're, for instance, this machine, if you well, fully if you gate, fully you loaded, it it's down. good. If you get fully loaded, it's going to run. Tap out at about thirty-five to forty thousand dollars. Now, if you're a movie company and you're producing movies and you want to edit your movies. This will be more than you need. This would be exactly what you need. You could not do that online. You need the computing power in your lap or in your and, in your and, house. And the other thing, more important, is animations. Like I worked when I first moved down here. Um, I used to work for a company called the Teaching Company, and we produced um, we produced courses, college level courses, in our TV studios, and uh, we were all Mac. 
And every new editor, every new graphics person got a brand new cheese grater Mac, right? They were not. When we started getting into the animations, the brain. And we're showing these deep animations and or, you know, even world like when we do a course uh, like on a continent and you're trying to do these really cool animations, we would have to farm all that stuff out because we did not even with the fastest Macs did not have the computing power to render all of this. So now what they're doing is they're giving you that ability with these machines to do a lot more of that rendering yourself and not have to pay third party companies to do these for you. So that's what they're going after with these Mac machines. Well, uh, the the argument here is that, that once they sell a machine, there's not much more they, they have to sell you. And there are gonna be third party things to go in those PCI slots. And you're not voiding a warranty by putting anything in that PCI slot. You, you know, just because, avoid the support. You don't void a well, warranty. Well, you avoid the support on that particular function. Well, you, so, so we're so, going well, to get so to no, a so you, no, but see, you know where you go? Let's say it's a Radeon board. You go to Radeon support. Yeah, yeah but here's the problem. Right? I call yeah. up, I'm a business, and, I, and when my machines aren't working... I'm losing money. So now, I, if it's it's great. If you're a home consumer, that's wonderful. But and those machines are down and those editors aren't working or those people aren't working, you're paying them, you're getting behind schedule, you got studio booked, you got this got to get done on a, on a time. You call up Apple and Apple's going to say, well, that, that card is not ours. And it seems the problem is between here and there. You need to call them. And then they call, you call them, they call you back and they, and, and they say, well, we think our card is working out fine and this is the problem. Problem. in business yeah. it rarely makes sense to do that you want but, but to try to stick something, with this one throat to choke the, well <laughs> I, I guess you're right about that yeah 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 so they'll pay the money they'll pay the money well i'm not going to pay the money you're not going to pay the money no, uh, no, no. and and uh you know i mean but pixar will but you know if the the original cheese grater came in at about three grand uh, the later on they got a little bit higher uh, as things were added to it, uh, and then the new one here. This thing started at uh, three thousand, and then you could go up to four thousand, and then you could keep adding stuff from there. Okay, um, so uh, that this that was the situation with the with the, uh, the trash can. Here, you're starting off about the point at which you could almost top out a trash can. And these are pretty powerful little machines. If I get the new cheese grater with the bottom line configuration that the $6,000 configuration is, I have a more powerful machine with my, with my uh, trash can here than that one. F faster, better, better graphics card, more memory, uh, more cores, uh, everything. Uh, and so, I mean, like for instance, I'm going, I'm happy with this. Why, why do I have to get this cheese grater? And to begin with, it's not even, what I love about the cheese grater is when I moved this thing from the guest room where I was setting it up into here, I walked in here holding it in one hand. I was grabbing it by the lid and just walking in and putting it down on the table here. This new one is as heavy as the old cheese grater, and I don't know if you've ever lifted one of those cheese graters, but I, I did about a week ago, and I'm telling you, man, I, it, maybe I'm just getting too old to carry that piece of shit, but that's a heavy fucking machine. Yeah, they're big, big heavy machines. You know? So, I mean, what do we do? You know, I mean... I, but I'm, I'm very happy with the cheese grater. I can't... Uh, I, I, and he... he I would. I have not for one moment thought about buying the new one. You know. Uh, you now, reason. now let's go one step further. There's a monitor that comes with this thing. <laughs> have you seen the monitor? Yes. Well, it it uh, it it it's it's pretty awesome. You know, if you're really nitpicky. Uh, I uh, nitpicky knit knit is the term here. They they have things called knits, is it? Which is uh, uh, has to do with the with the brightness of the picture versus the contrast and everything. These are 8K monitors. 8K. Your eye can't even see 4K, and already they're going to 8K. 
all right? Um, this thing cost $5,000. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's just the screen. If you want the stand, I know it's a thousand. It's going to cost you another thousand dollars, and I'm yeah. going. What does this stand blow me? I mean, does it do <laughs> something I don't know about? Yeah, they get a little bit. I mean, I understand why you charge for a monitor like that, but a stand, a thousand bucks, it's just, a, you know. And they're saying they're not even sure it's going to support the visa, the standard visa mount on the back of that monitor. So you might be stuck having to buy that thousand dollar stand. Well, uh, I'm, uh, and, and then when they were showing it at, at uh, the WWDC or whatever, um, uh, they showed four of them right next to each other, saying you can run it up to four of them at one time out of this new machine. And I'm going, that's 20 fucking thousand, wait a minute, excuse me, 24,000 with the stands. <laughs> why would, I, why, 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 I, I'm I've sorry. I've worked at places where they would spend that money. I'm sorry, I don't have that kind of fuck you money. And no. even if I had a company, I don't think I would have that kind of fuck you money. If yes, you would. <laughs> yes, you would. Oh, well, aren't there aren't there PCs around that can do pretty fast computing for movies? Yes. Yeah. But but there are the other there are these processes, and I damn uh, when they were when they were talking about that cheese grater, they mentioned those processes that need to run in order to render. Yeah. I can't remember what they called, and they said those are now a thing of the past mm -hmm. oh, with, look, this, with these new computers, and that saves a shit ton of time. Because those we used to render models, 3D models mm -hmm. for television, just like things that run for 20 or 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And they would take three, four days to render. Oh, I remember those days. To, I remember those so, days when I was doing 3D with Lightwave. Yeah, so and, could you imagine where it is today, how much bigger these files have gotten, and why these machines would be important in those circumstances? Who reminded me that, uh, it might have been Phil last night, I don't know, where, where I would start rendering, and I would say, well, let's come back tomorrow morning and see if it's finished. Right. You know? Now I can do that same rendering on this machine on the on the trash can in about you know a minute two minutes you know, um, but uh, it was it was rough in the old days. But. And if that's what you're doing for a living, and that's exactly the kind of work that you're constantly doing in your environment in your studio, mm -hmm. and you notice that they how many times he said the word studio. Oh. They got the optional wheels for the cheese grater. Yeah, yeah, because I think so. You could wheel it around your studio. These mm -hmm. are designed for you know Pixar and all these. Animation well, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. This is Apple. Pixar gets them for free, I think. Well, but still, that's who's good. no. I, there's paper money, or you know, there's phony money that is on the, the left pocket. Has I get to pay the right pocket. That's right. Yeah. Let me bring up a new subject here, since uh, we don't want to... You know, please. We, huh? <laughs> said, please. Well, well no, I think, I, think, I think people are interested in this because they're interested in new equipment and what's being done with Even new equipment. You talk about this new equipment is just for these small numbers of people. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, folks, all of you and me are too uh, poor to be able to afford even the wheels that go on the bottom of this new machine because I think they're a thousand dollars if I'm not mistaken. We're too poor to breathe in the same room. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, but uh, uh, Tim Cook, if you buy one, I hear is personally going to go out and blow everyone that buys one. <laughs> and, and he has experience. So, you know, he knows what he's doing. Um, here's the thing I brought up the other day and I, I think it, it's worth talking about more. And that is... A lot of major companies have bought up media companies now. And it is changing the landscape of media as we know it. Uh, so much so that our dear president the other day said, boycott AT&T because they own CNN. Which is kind of impossible to do when you have a two-year obligation to AT&T, but that, <laughs> he, he doesn't live with everybody else, so he has no idea that that's the reality. Uh, but the fact is that these companies are buying up media companies like crazy. And what they're doing to those media companies is not going to make you too terribly happy. And the first sign across the bow that we saw this week was that uh, DC has, a, uh, has an app, has a channel, DC 
app and channel with, uh, in which they run the, uh, DC made movies as well as their all their cartoon all their comic books and they have all the old shows that they did and all the Batman movies all the Superman movies and so on uh, and then they have new shows they're producing and right now they're producing um, Swamp Thing. Oh. I don't know if you remember the old Swamp Thing movies, but uh, Swamp Thing, the series, and it's very good. It's very good. It had one episode last week, and before the second episode uh, aired, they announced it was being canceled. And the reason it was being canceled was because they, it, they wouldn't say why exactly, but a lot of us believe it has something to do with AT&T buying up Warner, which owns DC, and them saying, "Man, we don't want to pay for that." You know, we want you to do a little more. We want you to run this place on a little cheap, more cheaply than you have. Uh, I, I disagree with you right there because I, I can tell you because I work for one of these companies you're talking about right now. I don't want to say their name, but they, they sit there and they talk about Why how you, they're well, keeping you, them you, separate. Well, just give us yep. their initials. Is it AT and T? No, I work for American Telephone and Telegraph. <laughs> um, but, you know, they, they sit there and the CEO comes out and says how they're keeping them two separate companies because, you know, and that's where the whole monopoly thing comes in. It, it can't be a monopoly when you're a communications company and you bought an entertainment company. It's two separate entities, but that's where the future is going. So you, if you're going to be an entertainment company, it's good to be a communications company too so you can provide the whole shabam. But, you know, the, I think the big thing that everybody's going to be making a mistake is all these companies want to come up with their own streaming service and they're not going to want to sell their product to other companies. So you're going to sit there and all you're going to do is, hey, this month I'm going to have this one. I'm going to cancel it next month and then I'm going to get the next one so I can just binge watch what I want to watch. And, you know, because otherwise you're going to be getting all how of them. Long be before, how, long, how, we had how long before we get some kind of antitrust suit going here? What's antitrust? What about that is antitrust? Well, when you have product, and let's say... A some telephone of, company say, bought a TV well, company. Well, let's say Netflix needs uh, movies, and, and uh, Disney, which is now owned by... Uh, God, I keep forgetting who owns what now. Disney owns everything, practically. They just bought Fox television stations. They just bought Fox television stations, FX... Uh, now that's more of a monopoly. All, uh, all of Fox, Fox TV, regional okay. sports networks, everything. Yeah, they bought those. They've got all the Star Wars movies. They've got all. You know, they've got so much. They own Marvel. most of the important media of the last part of this century. Okay, the last century. Um, and now they say to Netflix, "Well, we're not going to sell it to you because we have our own channel coming on." Where you know what you're doing is you're creating an anti-competitive practice by not selling the movies you own to somebody who in the past has shown your movies, but now you're squeezing them out. I think that is getting near antitrust. I agree. And I know that when AT and T bought Time Warner, or you know that they they were end up saying that they were going to have a third party handle the, the distribution of their programming to the competitors, like to Comcast or whatever, because, you know, they always negotiate how much they're going to pay per subscriber, per channel or whatever. And at and said, we'll have a third party yeah. handle. But, but, but now but, it's just almost like everybody's just saying, I'm not going to sell you. But the stuff. question just here is how much myself. are they going to put their fingers in the pie? In other words, for instance, there's a belief that this whole merger had something to do with this show being canceled after only being run once. They didn't know whether anybody liked it or not, you know? Uh, they didn't have any real numbers on it. Uh, it's also said that one of the reasons it might have been canceled is they film it in North Carolina and they get something like $64 million from North Carolina to make the show there. It, they have the tax incentive or something like that and that that somehow got fucked up. They, that may have had something to do with it, but they could have gone somewhere else to make it. They could have gone over to Louisiana. They got swamps there. You know, I mean, you don't have to just do it in North Carolina. Anyway, uh, they, um, uh, it's, but, so, so here they are. Somebody is fucking around with D.C., all right? Now we go over to some of the other properties that AT&T now owns. How about Turner Classic Movies, which is a gem, you know? It's one of the few channels we have that really 
has a mission and has done it beautifully over the years. What's going to happen to TCM? Are they going to finally, oh, we're going to fold that into our Disney channel. Well, you know, come on. And maybe we won't, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's just I'm, I'm worried for all these things that we really love, maintaining somewhat decent in the light of companies who are going to want to do away with duplicity and fold everything into one thing like the Disney Channel and whatever. And I, well, that, I, that's where they're going to need to make new rulings and stuff to start saying, you know, yes, you can come out with your own content that you don't have to sell to other networks or, you know, other providers. But then there's going to have to be something where they say, you know what, you do have to sell at a reasonable rate this programming to, you know, maybe past program that you already did sell before you have to continue to sell versus, you know, if you want to come out with new programming that you only want to do on your own to incentivize somebody to subscribe to your product. But like I said, then not all that's going to do is, hey, now I'm going to subscribe to Netflix, you know, for these next couple of months, and then I'm going to stop. I'll subscribe to Disney for the next few months, and either that or I just get a VPN and watch it on Netflix from overseas. Well, I mean, you, you, you know, you can, you can say that now, but you don't know if that's going to be practical eventually. But what happens, like, for instance, Take Netflix as an example. Netflix had a deal with Marvel, in which they had several shows that were started on Netflix from Marvel. Uh, uh, Luke Cage, uh, I'm trying to remember all Jessica the Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Good Daredevil. Show. Well, they've all been canceled. You know, Jessica Jones has one more run and that's it. They've been canceled. Why have they been canceled? Because of Disney. Because Marvel pulled it from Netflix. You know, and where where are those old episodes going to show up? Are they going to show up on Netflix, even though they're a Netflix original? I doubt it. They'll wind up on the Disney Channel. But and see, and that's where I'm thinking that they, I don't know, uh, if they sold it before, they would continue to sell it. But maybe they'd stop the, the fourth season is going to only be available on Disney. But like I said, and then that's where you're just going to, you're going to end up going month to month i'm gonna have this one this month i'll have this next one next month well, also am i not if i'm not mistaken rob but isn't espn owned by disney now too yep. it's been a long time they've been owned by disney yeah, yeah. so i mean that's well, why they had to sell that's why after the merger with fox disney has to sell all the fox regional sports networks it's a conflict okay. of interest all right but i mean right. here yeah. Here's even more of a, a monopoly one that I heard of today. Apparently, that uh, I think there's thoughts or talks about maybe a Dish Network actually merging with DirecTV. Yeah, I've heard that. So it would basically be one satellite provider. Okay, and by well, the way, sense, let, way, let's drag yeah, let's drag Patrick so. kicking and screaming into this discussion. Uh, your Star Wars movies, yeah, which you love, about- huh? What about them? Owned by Disney. Well, yeah, I, I've known that. It, it, it was annoying that, that they took over. Yeah, and so what is going to happen? I mean, already we see that, that Star Wars brand is being watered down because every year they feel compelled to bring out a Star Wars movie of some sort, so they bring out all these yeah, nitwit pictures like Rogue yeah. One that nobody really wants to see and doesn't fit into the the greater story, you know? They're taking the cue from what they feel the Marvel uh, franchise can do. And Marvel could do every year because there were different stories with different characters. Yeah. You can't do the same Wait thing. In the every, same every year? I think they're doing like two Marvel pictures a year. Okay? Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is there's more there that they could do individual pictures versus Star Wars or even Star Trek. Mm-hmm. I mean, if Star Trek came out every year or every other year, would it, it, it just, you can't do it. And, and they're watering it down. Let's see, who, yeah. owns, who owns Star Trek now? Is it, is, Disney doesn't own it. Who owns it? Yeah. Paramount owns it. Paramount's still its own company, isn't it? Paramount's still its own company. So I think one thing that we've just found out over the years, we found out, you know, that Darth Vader was Luke Skywalker's father, but apparently Mickey Mouse is Darth Vader's father. He is now. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. Mickey Mouse is wearing the pants in the family. Okay? So, yeah. With two little buttons on them, which is nice. 
But I mean, it, it, it's just all this, uh, all this. Um, um, what we just lost, uh, Jeff. Jeff, what happened to Jeff? He, Jeff, oh, are you sorry. there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, turn your camera on. It's not on. Hey, so Alex, I gotta ask you because yeah. I've been hearing bad things lately. You you watched the Star Trek uh, Defiant or uh, Discovery, right? The Star Trek Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like it? Um. Y yes, I liked the first year. So I thought it was, you know, I watched season yeah. one and season two. I thought it was awesome. I am, I'm just hooked. I, I liked, I, I liked, I liked season Star Trek Picard. I, I thought hearing that it's, yeah. they're saying that was a failure. Was as, to begin with, Star Trek Discovery first season was I was just uh, uh, um, absolutely amazed by it. I thought that they they hit all the right notes. Uh, they reestablished what their show was as opposed to the rest of the Star Trek universe. I thought they did a very good job of that. Second season, I felt they kind of were wandering around for about half the season trying to figure out where the fuck it was going. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but it's all be also because they changed showrunners. So that yeah, always, I loved it, and I thought yeah. like the cinematography of it was oh, beautiful. Oh, the, was all that, a, the, the the production quality on it was exquisite. Yeah, you know, it was just it was amazing, and I just I was disappointed. I was thinking, I'm like, you know, this should have been on regular TV so more people could have watched it. But you know, and then to hear them saying that, uh, oh, yeah, it was a miserable failure, and blah blah blah. And I think, man, you guys watch the same show I did. <laughs> Do you know, this is interesting, by the way, as a side note, I just, I saw this tonight and I didn't believe it when I read it, uh, but um, the IMD, IMDB says that they have uh, come out with the fact that um, one program this year has been the top rated show of all time. I will repeat that again. IMDb says they have come out with what is now on their list, the number one top-rated show of all time on IMDb. What show do you think that is? Is it a oh. is it a broadcast network show, a cable show, or, a, or a, a streaming it, show? It's a cable show. Got to be Game of Thrones. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. You're not far from home. You're on the same network. Mad Men? Huh? No, they, they weren't on HBO. You ready? Hold on to your seats, folks. I don't understand this either. They, they say it is the top-rated show of all time on IMDb. Now, I don't know what that means. That would qualify to be number one on IMDb. Chernobyl. What? Oh, somebody Never heard of it. You know. Huh? Said that. What? Who said I think that? Somebody in the chat room was talking about Chernobyl. Uh, really? Yeah. But uh, it's brand new, isn't it? I mean. Yes, but it is. It has been getting huge ratings, just huge ratings. Uh, and uh, I I don't know what they mean about the, it's the number one all-time top-rated show of all time on IMDb. So maybe just people are going, can you, like, rate shows on IMDb? I have Give no it, like, idea. five stars type I of have thing? no idea because then I went to the story, and uh, the story, hold on a second. Let me see here. Uh, where, where is it? I can, oh, I can, oh, there we go. Here comes the story. It just says, HBO miniseries Chernobyl has proven to be a genuine phenomenon. Launched without much hyper fanfare, the drama about the catastrophic explosion at the Chernobyl uh, a nuclear power plant in 1986 topped IMDb's list of top-rated TV shows of all time. After just three episodes, it may be a harrowing subject matter, but some complicated science to understand. But it proves the audience audiences uh, crave creative, smart storytelling. And let me look. They have a list of their all-time shows. Here we go. Oh. Top-rated shows. Um, let me go here. Uh, Chernobyl is number one. It has an IMDb. Oh, I see what the rating is. Okay. It's their, their rating of, uh, of how good it is. 
All right. So uh, it's like a Siskel and Ebert of. You uh, know how they have those stars on on mm -hmm. IMDb? It has nine point yeah. six. Uh, okay. It may be a, as a result of reviews from people and so on. Planet Earth 2 is 9.5, Band of Brothers and Planet Earth and Breaking, Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones is down with a 9.3. That's what they're referring to. But still, I think it's American bots out there just rating it good. Yeah, to try to make yeah, it well, bad. The favorite show with bots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's pretty amazing, though. I mean, but how many of you have seen Chernobyl? Anybody? Never even heard of it. Oh, oh. <laughs> I've, never heard I've, got a I've, got a I've got to clue you into something. If you have HBO, yeah. watch Chernobyl. Okay? Right. It is. Uh, it's probably, I think, that and a show called Fosse Verdon, I think, are the two best shows that were done this year so far. And incredible. Just incredible. Um, and uh, you think we have... Uh, uh, we have bureaucracy here in the United States. Go watch Chernobyl and see how the Russians do bureaucracy. You know, and how they cover up stuff. They take people out behind the barn and shoot them behind the head. You know, that's how they keep a secret. It's the Republican way. It's the Republican <laughs> way. Yeah. Why do you think Trump reveres Russia so much? You, you hear about these Republicans, what they talk about, what they want their society to be. It's like, man, why don't you just move to North Korea? Because that's what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, so, oh, boy, I'm exhausted tonight again. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> hey, you know what else makes you tired, Alex? What? <laughs> Depression. Well, that's what I've been told. I might be depressed. Why, why not just try to go on something and see it? You know, if it doesn't, you know, go on something for a month. If it don't for, like but it, I have to go to a shrink. I have to go to a shrink to do that. No, you don't. It may be yeah, medical. I went on Prozac I'm, and I got it from my family doctor. And maybe I have a heart problem. I, I don't know. You know. But oh. you, you, uh, you, you have been uh, very snappy lately. Snappy? <laughs> what do yes. you mean snappy? Uh, <laughs> Fuck you! I'm not snappy, dude. You, you played, uh, what was it the last episode you were arguing with Phil about a 4K versus 8K? Who the fuck cares? Yeah. <laughs> well, know, I was... I happen to agree with you. Uh, who does give? Who does care? Apparently, Phil does. But it, it just I'm sorry. From my point, it seemed like he was just reading something, not saying. Huh what you had or what you knew or something. It was just like reading and, and it's a 4K and I don't know. It's just, uh, well. Yeah. Well, Phil, go 4K over the money and buy one. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, no, I haven't been that grouchy lately. Maybe with Phil, but that's a, that's a, that's but, but, and even that, the whole thing, like with SG, like he's wiping off his camera and, you know, no, 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 no. He no, wasn't. No, he, no, you you no. could have just carried on the conversation, yeah. act like he wasn't there. Can I? There. Can I say this? I absolutely hate SG. I, I do. Right. Uh, let me let me explain and you why. Made that apparently let clear. me explain why. <laughs> Every time SG comes on the program, he does something that he completely throws up. everything off. Uh, oh. the, la the last night, the the the, the uh, <laughs> What can we call it? The Tony effect on his camera. <laughs> the fog. The fog. He was wiping it, and it wasn't going away. I mean, it was just terrible, and it, he was wiping it and wiping it, and it was just, it was, you know, we couldn't, he was monopolizing the situation. And then well, I, the I just, other time. I listened time, to us on a podcast. Other so times I'm... he does it, and his his audio isn't working or another time he does it something else is not working or then when he finally does get things working we only see the top of his head you know <laughs> fuck you sg you know and then one night i'm running an interview here and i've got the i've got my skype open i don't have the line on okay i i don't it you would not see it as go being green you can still call believe it or not and it will still ring but it says um you know, invisible is what it says, all right? He starts calling, you know, at like 15 minutes after the hour while I'm running some kind of an interview, and I'm trying to figure out what, and I had opened up the Skype, so I had to close the Skype so SG couldn't get in. But he wasn't even listening to the fucking show to see we weren't taking calls. 
But see, and on that one, I could almost, I didn't know your Well, I mean, I'd you know, Rob, I, I Rob had that problem tonight, change, but, but for an entirely I, different reason. I know, like, you know, at one time Phil was giving you a suggestion of, you know, why not start taking calls while the interview's still running so that way you can go from the interview right to a, a you know, a panel. But, you know, maybe I was thinking you are doing that, but if your presence was shown not to be. Yeah, it was that invisible. Calls. You know, yet he calls. He does, He's not listening to the show. You know, so, I mean, fuck him. Uh, that, uh, that's why I was annoyed with him last night. That was just the end of a, a whole series of times he came on, and I had to spend five minutes with him until finally he hung up because he couldn't get something to work or because, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Rob? Yeah, it was the show I was listening to that I called in because I forgot <laughs> it was live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I forgot it wasn't live, I mean. Yeah, right. Yeah. Fucking idiot. You know. See, it was funny. You wanted to call in during the. You were talking about. They were talking about the cameras, right? The 4K thing and the 8K thing, and yeah. the, then the Apple, the Apple machines. And I, I'm like, I wanted I to call, call in. And I wanted I to call in at the last five seconds of of the exchange, and I didn't expect to see Damien there. And all of a sudden, I'm on Damien's show, and the theme's playing. And he's going. Rob called, and I'm not sure why. I'm like. <laughs> Wait a minute! I, I must have looked like a nut because I was expecting to see Alex and everybody who was talking about something that I had pressed the play button on. It wasn't like I didn't press the play button. Yeah, I just forgot. It wasn't like I tuned in and it was running. Well, I did so. something. I did something today. Uh, I uh, I announced last night that I got word that uh, iHeartRadio has the ramble on their on their website couldn't find it you go to go to podcast type in alex bennett's ramble can i do it on on my i heart i heart uh app, app on my yes, phone absolutely because i did that when i heard you talking about it i went and i you go I typed there alex bennett boom you, you go there wait a minute hold on but a second there's a different alex bennett so that's i don't know if i did alex bennett's ramble hey, do alex bennett's ramble oh you have to put in uh, with the uh, ramble, huh? Yeah, either that or Alex just go to Gabnet. Just go to the Gabnet site and click on the iHeartRadio thing up there, and it'll go right to it. Oh, there it is. You have to put in Alex Bennett's ramble. I just put in Alex Bennett, and it didn't. See, come and up. I think that's why I was doing Alex Bennett, and then I was doing the ramble. I tried yeah. the ramble, and I tried Alex Bennett, and yeah. neither one worked. Yeah, Alex you need to Bennett. Type in Alex Bennett. Yeah, they, they they don't. You know, it's not like they have a wide uh, recognition of the, what the, you're putting in. Their search engine it should be better because yeah. even just typing yeah. in Alex Bennett, you should be able to. It should. You know, that's what yeah. I thought. Right. Exactly. There's another Alex Bennett on there. Yeah. Yeah. But the, and that's fine, but it should be able to distinguish cool. between them. I'm going to follow this. Uh, yeah, but anyway, I think they called that other Alex Bennett Jr. So I just today I just figured, well, what the hell if they if they put my show on? So I I added uh, Alex Bennett's uh, Life in the Passing Lane, uh, and then I applied oh, to good. get uh, the Intersection and the Exchange. Uh, on. That's good to hear because I do a lot of driving and. I, while I'm driving at 75 miles an hour, I hate futzing with, like, I would love to listen to GabNet a lot of times, but it, I don't have an app, right? So I've got to go to, I, I, if I want to listen to the podcast, like, you know, yeah. uh, the Life in the Passing Lane, I don't even try because it's, when you're driving, you can't Yeah, do it's that. difficult. Uh, uh, if, if people want to uh, at all listen to us on, uh, we do have an Android app, believe it or not. It's an old one. It's got an old logo on it, but it, it works. It still works, and it's got the live, and it's got all the programs on it there. So uh, you can use Android for that, if you. but you don't have an Android. You have an iPhone. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I can't afford to hire somebody to go out and do an app because those are, those, are those are not easy to do, okay? In fact, we actually had to have somebody do that Android app, but it was easier to get it on and past and all of that but anyway uh, uh, so we are available on iHeartRadio which is nice, we're also available on Spotify we're also available on TuneIn, uh, our live stream uh, what, where else are we? God, we're everywhere we're, uh, so does the iHeartRadio have any type of monetary type of thing where if you do start getting so many people no, that no, no, no they, they just, you know, they wanted to get in. What they wanted to do was add to their radio presence a podcast presence. And so there we are, you know. Now, we're probably part of, of 
you know, 10,000 other podcasts that are on there. But Maybe you'll become an iHeartRadio partner. Uh, yeah, that worked out <laughs> well for us with TuneIn, didn't it? <laughs> You know, one day I get a letter from uh, from uh, TuneIn that says we're canceling our relationship with you. And this was a couple of years after I never heard a word from them. You know, didn't know you had a relationship. I never knew I had a relationship. You know, in fact, I had since told everybody on uh, GabNet to quit saying we're a TuneIn partner. You know, so. anyway. I saw Jeff had his hand up. Uh, yes, yeah. Jeff. I just looked to see if on a, what was on a podcast today i think early this morning and all of a sudden years came up like uh, i don't know the fifth or sixth thing that was that was that was on the list what was this what podcasts. podcasts yeah just ask for podcasts that's all I said. yeah and um alex bennett where did you where did you ask for the podcast i don't remember it's a website, or where, was it like Alexa or something? It could have been for, for, for uh, Google, for all I remember. Hmm. Could be based on your search results. Yeah, it could be something. based on your search record. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because well, yeah. you're up there like, I don't know, number five or something like that. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, well, you know. Oh, well, you never know. I, I don't know what that was about. I don't believe it's suddenly a wonderful thing that's happening to us and we're getting recognition, you know. Uh, you get re ratings and you didn't even know it. Yeah, right, right. We're, yeah. No, we're number one, that, us in Chernobyl. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, where were we? Uh, let's see here. Um, I know that uh, Rob is sick of talking about politics, and apparently all of you are too because we haven't even talked about politics once tonight. And uh, I think it's at a dead halt anyway because I was uh, tuned into MSNBC and I think they were playing Yahtzee. I think they were that bored <laughs> with what's going on, you know. Yes, uh, Jason. So uh, I do have to ask, you know, how the Trump is wanting to put a tariff against Mexico for not doing enough to protect America's borders. Mm -hmm. So that's how I was just kind of curious. Why is it Mexico's responsibility to protect America's borders? Hmm. Yeah, that's who I wanted to answer, Patrick. Um, he just dropped it. Yeah, he, he dropped it. Did he? Oh, did he? Oh. Yeah, he dropped it. So your, your question is moot because... Well, he said they came to an agreement or something. He said they came to an agreement. Uh, he said that uh, Mexico promised that they would be more... Um, uh, they would crack down more at the border. And they're going to pay for the wall. And other thing <clears> that... Uh, what the turnabout today is now Joe Biden is against the Hyde Amendment. Yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. Hyde is bad. And I'll tell you what, just from my personal standpoint, not because he's a Democrat, but if I was looking at him, what bothers me about that is somebody who has changed their mind on an issue that big overnight, that is scary to me. And that well, was one of the reasons I did not like Trump is how he changed his mind mm -hmm. so many things so quickly. Um, it, that just it, it's a scary prospect to me that if you if you believe in something, I, you have the right to change your mind. And yes, it can happen overnight sometimes, but it just seemed weird to me because I turned the news on today and now I see that Biden. Uh, changed his mind and is now against the Hyde uh, Amendment. So, yeah, yeah, Jeff. I think that Biden actually had asked somebody a question last week, and he didn't understand what the lady said, and and therefore he made a mistake. And I'm not going to say it's a positive negative or a double negative but he didn't get it quite figured out well, yeah but he made a mistake and that's the the operative word here yeah. that if we're going to have somebody who makes mistakes while he's like running that. for this critical office uh he's going to fuck up enough that you know he could just blow the whole thing so um, do we want think, this guy i think he can't fool around with with women today 
What do you, uh, you, you mean with women? You, you absolutely can't, uh, ex unless your name is Trump, of course. Yeah. Uh, and then he seems to be able to get away with all this shit. Well, uh, those two women who talk to him every day and really close shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I it, well, I may mean, have to hand it to Trump in his business. His a lot of his w people who were running his company were women, so you know. But that's so he could you know touch him on the pussy. But anyway, uh, Biden, I I think is a bad idea at this point. I I at one point felt he was a good idea only in that I thought he could hold his own against Trump, but he's he's already mm -hmm. making too many gaffes. You know, it's too early in the game to be making gaffes. And what, what, See, any, anybody else have a feeling on this? I wanted him to be Hillary Clinton's vice president, and then if they would have won, he would have been the longest-running vice president in the history of the Can country. Can you run for vice president again? Yep, there's yeah. no, there's nothing well, against it. It's all about president. Really? Well, you know, I mean... Um, so he blew his chance to be in history, you know, bigger footprint in history. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, are you are anybody here still a, Bi a Biden fan or even think Biden's a good idea? Yes, Rob. Never was. I'm just raising my hand because I think Biden is the only one who could beat Trump. I, I, just, I don't I, think any of the other ones. I don't think any of the other ones have a shot. Well, look. Uh, for instance, I've warmed up a lot to Elizabeth Warren, in that I find her intelligent. I find her proposals are the kind of proposals I want to see a presidential candidate making. She's all the things I would probably want in a candidate except one thing. Winnable. Winnable. And and that she clearly is not. Okay? And it has... I think she is. No, wait a minute. Don't get mad, Charlie. Yeah, Charlie gets upset. It, it has to do... It has to do... I gotta tell you, with the cosmetic factor. But if you, you know. stop, if you stop it with that, and you start saying people who believe that are dumbasses and need to start backing people for their ideas, not for what well, they look like. Well, I agree like. with you. Exactly. I agree we, with you. We, we we kept saying people are dumbasses for voting for Trump, but he's he's the president. But he also lost by three million votes. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that, that uh, uh, he lost by win. three million votes, but he's still president. Okay, so it doesn't matter if he got a trillion more votes, or less votes, he's president. All right. How how is it that you could vote for Hillary? A choice. Vote for uh, it was easy. I put my fingers on my nose, and okay. I pulled the lever. Oh, oh she was so much better looking than. Uh... Well, I look. I don't vote because somebody looks good. Although if uh, OAC well, wants talking. to run, I'll be happy to vote for her in a second. But Did you uh, see her attending bar. No. Last week. Really. Yeah, she was tending bar, man. She looked good behind the bar. Good all the time. You know, I mean, before I die, I want you know, I want a president I can jerk off to. Okay, you know, is that asking too much? Well, maybe you just gotta swing for the other team. Because <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, Buttigieg might be there too. So. No way. Just not gonna happen. Well, it, not it, gonna vote that way. Uh, he, uh, I think Buddha, 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 Buddha is, um, uh, is actually pretty damn good. Yeah, you, know? And you know, his worst thing about him is his name. Well, I don't think it is because I think that, you know, is sometimes an unpronounceable name, uh, allows you to, uh, uh, gain a certain notoriety because everybody's either making fun of the name or whatever, you know? He used to be uh, a guy named Obama. And to be gay and have a name that sounds like but something, you know, uh, <laughs> it, you know people, people make jokes about the name and whatever, but they remember him. They remember him as Mayor Pete. That's, that's what they've done that's smart. Uh, and uh, I think that he's intelligent. I think he certainly could go up against Trump because he did serve in the military, not once, but twice. He did go. Oh, he he does, served in the he military. Do, he does once. know another language besides uh, gibberish, uh, and and uh, knows uh, knows what nine languages. He went to Harvard. You know, this guy has all the things that Trump was going to find it hard to fight. 
Oh, um, he went to Wharton Business School. Yeah. He he's uh has an elite education. Yep. Yep. You wouldn't know it. Oh, who? A Trump? Trump. Oh, yeah, he went to Wharton. Yeah. yeah. Well, so much for Wharton. Uh, the only difference between his dad and who is the one actress now is his dad didn't get caught. <laughs> <laughs> you put him on the swim team, did he? <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> it's going to be on anything that was with his feet because he had bone spurs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he was no big fan of that war. Did you hear him? He was no fan yeah. of the war. Right. right. He made it almost sound like he didn't go because he di I didn't believe in the war. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, there were a lot of other people that were over there who didn't believe in it either, you know? But they went. And if they didn't go, they then put themselves on the line and clogged up the judicial system here in the United States. I considered that a brave act. I didn't consider moving to Canada a particularly brave act, you know? Uh, but staying here and clogging up the system certainly uh, was a brave act. And uh, but he wasn't a resistor. He was a guy with a fucking bone spur that had, you know that his father probably manufactured. Well, and that's what somebody mentioned too. <clears throat> they wanted to see his physical uh, record because they're saying that bone spurs don't go away. So if he had them back then, he would still have them. But he doesn't remember what foot he had. He didn't on. remember what foot he had them on, right? But bone spurs supposedly don't go away unless you have them operated on. Right. That's right. Yeah, and then it'd be a record of the operation. Yeah, well, let's face it, the guy the guy was a draft dodger, all right, uh, but he didn't believe in the war, so he had the right not to go, right? I, I he had just, the money not to go, you mean? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I I even served for Christ's sake, you know, and who am I? I'm the biggest coward alive. Yeah, so I don't know. So how long were you actually on a boat for? I was on a, it's not a boat, it's a ship, okay, wow. to begin with. You call it a boat, and they laugh at you. And, and you don't call it upstairs, either. It's topside. And downstairs is below. This is all the nomenclature that if you don't use it, they make fun of you in the Navy. Anyway. <laughs> is, that a, is that a hat or a dog bowl? It's my dad's Navy hat. Oh, is it your dad's Navy hat? Okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, anyway, uh, the point is, I'll get to you in a second, uh, Patrick. Um, I served on, uh, the, on the USS Topeka, uh, which was a, uh, a, a, a guided missile cruiser. And uh, the reason I, I got on that ship was because when they asked me what kind of ship I wanted to be assigned to, I said, well, what are they? They said, well, they're cruisers, they're destroyers, and they named a whole bunch of them, and I went, hmm. Well, I don't want to be on a destroyer because it destroys stuff. But a cruiser probably just zips around the water. <laughs> Have you ever seen a cruiser? These things are fucking huge. And the guided missiles? Yep, we had n guided missiles right there. And in one case... They had taken it out to, it had been retrofitted to guided missiles, and they took it out and they shot the guided missiles, and since they were heat-seeking missiles, they came back and went at the smokestacks on the ship. <laughs> yeah, this was the ship I was on, okay? <laughs> Pride of the fucking Navy, the USS Topeka. Yes, uh... Yeah. Yes, it, Patrick? The only thing you call a boat in the Navy is a submarine. Yes, you're right. Oh, yeah. Oh, you I yeah. I didn't know that. Submarine had called a boat, everything out to the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And if you've ever been to, on, a, on an aircraft carrier, it's just, a, it's just called a big motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> have, have you, have, has anyone seen an aircraft carrier? Been, I think I was on, I, at yeah. one point I had the opportunity to go on an aircraft carrier. And it's, New York it, has one harb, uh, in the harbor, yeah. right? It, they're yeah. huge. They're huge. Does, yeah, doesn't New York have one docked permanently? Yeah, yeah. New York. Corpus Christi yeah. too. You, they, you know, you know what I I, I don't get is, um, you know, if if you think about some of these airplanes that are huge, like look at Air Force One. How does that thing even get off the fucking ground? You know, yeah. it's amazing. It's amazing. And when you look at these ships, you go, how do these things not sink? But they don't. You know. 
and they're you know it's, you can actually you can build a boat as big as you can build a boat and it will, it will still yep. float you know so anyway they're huge they're just huge they're like a city in size well when I was in uh, Pearl Harbor uh, we were about to take the uh, uh, the tour where you take the, the boat to the uh, memorial yeah and we got delayed by three hours because the USF John Stennis were coming into port yeah so they had the choppers coming in and we were watching the aircraft carrier come in and I've never seen an aircraft carrier up close what well, that fucking thing when we finally got in our boat to go to the memorial you couldn't even see the top of the fucking thing and we were probably 500 yards away from it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe how big it was. And when we went on to Missouri um, for the tour on that, I couldn't believe how big it was and then again how small it was. Have you seen the USS John McCain? Neither no, is well, neither is Trump. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> they have thousands of people on those aircraft carriers. There are about yeah. 3,000 people on an aircraft carrier. Oh, they were on Liberty when I was in Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. and they were on Liberty. Let me tell you, the night before they were there, just yeah. Honolulu was, it was busy but not bad. The night that, that they came in, I've never seen more people partying in bars, and just I mean, because they were at they were in the Gulf for I think it was six or eight months, so they hadn't been to port, and they were on their way to uh, I think they uh, uh, their port of call is uh, Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, but they were stopping in Hawaii, and let me tell you, the couple of days they were there, they fucking party. They partied hard. Mm. It's like New York City. Every year they have Fleet Week. Yeah. And you see them all over Manhattan. They they just they come they come ashore and they party. You know they always used to ask me why is it that that uh, Navy guys always wear their uniforms when they're on shore. You know you see more Navy people wearing, and the reason is, is that pussy. No. You are not allowed to stash civvies on the ship. So, so if you're in a port where you don't have a locker, say off offshore, uh, like New York City, uh, you have to wear your uniform. That's the clothes you've got, and that's why you always see the Navy in uniform, but you don't see the Air Force running around in uniform and the Army running around in uniform a lot. You know, for that very reason. Um, because you could never keep your civvies on the ship. You had to have, like I was in Long Beach, and you went and you rented a, a locker room somewhere uh, to keep your civilian clothes in. And you would change into them and then go out and do whatever you had to do. But, you know. Just a little Navy lore from this old uh, sod, or whatever you call them. A, 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 what do they call uh, sailors? Yes, yeah, sailors. Sailors. <laughs> what we call sailors? They're called sailors. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and anyway, uh, you know, um, but I, I lived on a ship for a while. Yeah, I had a bunk bed and everything. Well, like how long? Months or I weeks? Was, I, I think I was there for about maybe three or four months until I got word that uh, Armed Forces Radio and Television Service wondered where I was and wanted me to... <laughs> Did you ever get to a point where you thought, how the hell am I going to make this, this whole... Oh, this I, was, I was getting ready to throw up pretty much for two years. Because, I mean, the first day, the, the first time I realized this was not for me is we went out, the boat, they took the boat out for just a little cruise somewhere to, you know, just blow out the stacks and stuff like that, right? And so I go down below to the mess... See, I got all the nomenclature here for you to the mess. <laughs> and uh, I, I say, oh, I think I'll have some soup. Okay? And I, and I get a bowl of soup. And I remember this to this day. I'm sitting there. You say, hey, Cookie, give me a bowl of soup. And I'm a little uh, lightheaded today again. And I'm, I hope I don't throw up telling the story. 
<laughs> but I, I, I went, oh, this is great. You know, I'm, uh, everything's fine. We're on the water. I'm feeling great. And then I sat down, and I'm looking at the bowl, and the soup is in the bowl <laughs> is going like this. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the more it's going like this, the more I'm starting to get nauseous. And now I'm turning green. And one thing you don't want to be is you don't want to be below when you're on the water yeah. because when you're below, you don't have a reference point for your vision. Yeah. If you're on the deck, you yeah, can see you the can. horizon and you can adapt to it. Right. But when you're, uh, I'm, I remember, I remember just going on little sailboats and going below, at, when we're out on the water and getting incredibly nauseous because again I didn't have that reference point. I and then I kept throwing up for three days on that ship. I mean, while it was out, and I said, I just don't know if I, my stomach can take this for you know the next year and three quarters or whatever. Luckily, I uh, I. Had, I had, constantly pestered these people at Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. They got a hold of the Defense Department who could get assignments for that. And the Defense Department, they said, who do you know in the Defense Department? We just got orders from the Defense Department. Yeah. Not from the Navy, from the Defense Department. You're going to Hollywood. So I went to Hollywood. And I batched it pretty much for, uh, a, well, you're in three quarters. Well, I, the thing was, I was getting paid Navy pay, plus I was getting a stipend for living off base. And so I had to find an apartment and feed myself. So for the better part of a year and three quarters, it was a small hovel of an apartment with me and the silverfish. And, and, um, uh, and, and uh, ma uh, Kraft macaroni and cheese, which was 20 cents a box, feeding me pretty much for the two years. Wow. Yeah. But I never had to wear a uniform except on Armed Forces Day. Yeah, I always went to, to uh, work, as it were, uh, wearing, uh, wearing my civvies, you know, wearing a, a sport coat and a tie, and, you know, being respectful, as it were. So that was my, it was rough, it was rough, it really was. I, you know, I, you know. Yes, uh, Jeff. Oh. Turn on your mic. Turn on your mic, Jeff. Reminder to Jeff, turn on your mic. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. He, uh, he just turned off his camera. Oh, <laughs> I'm on. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah can you go on a, a sailboat, a small sailboat? Well, I know. If I'm up, uh, if, I, if I'm on top, if I'm uh, <laughs> yeah, on, on deck, uh, <clears throat> I'm fine. Uh, well, almost fine. A few years ago, my ex-lawyer, the one who's dead now, Fred Reamer, had a boat, and he every now and then would take us out in the boat. And this one particular day, he went out, and people will know this if they live in the Bay Area, but there's nobody here from the Bay Area tonight, so you don't know what I'm talking about. But be, if you go out under the Golden Gate Bridge, past the beginning of the Golden Gate Bridge, there's a place called the Potato Patch. And it's supposedly, it, while the water inside the bay is very placid and smooth. You hit the potato patch, and it's like this. And he went out into the potato patch, and I threw up. And I hadn't even had lunch, okay? <laughs> and I don't know where that green stuff came from, but it was coming out of me, you know? I just, uh, and, and Fred said to me, uh, don't feel bad. He said, you know, most experienced people are, uh, sometimes I come out the potato patch and I start throwing up. So, you know, I was able to throw up above on deck as well. But if you're in, you know, if you're traveling around and you're, uh, you're below, uh, it, it, you, I do get nauseous. But if I go up on deck, I'm fine, you know. So. But uh, I was not the best of sailors, Okay. You're not a good seaman. Oh, gob. That was the term I was looking for. I was not the best <laughs> gob you ever saw. I don't know where gob comes from. Um, isn't that the way the guy in, uh, what was that show? Uh, uh, oh, God. What was what was the show with Ron Howard narrated it? Uh, and and uh, uh, But the guy's name was G-O-B. It was pronounced Job. But uh, anyway. Uh, Arrested Development. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, that was the show. See, I'm not that weak. I'm not that flippy here. I'm running out of steam, that's for damn sure. Um, gee, I used to be able to do all night when it now takes me all night to do. So, uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, we're, you know, I mean, um, I just think that our president should be looked at as a draft dodger. Uh, and uh, we should realize that he's, uh, you know, uh, we should stop talking about him. That would drive him crazy if people stop talking about him. Then he'd be like a baby and he'd start crying like crazy and trying to do... We could, if we kept our mouths shut, if we didn't talk about him, he would be trying to get our attention so much that he would make some kind of a major mistake. But by, by goading him, we, he doesn't make those mistakes. He's responding to this stuff. But if we didn't mention him, if everybody just shut up and said, oh, we don't, who cares about the president? Hey, you know, we got a problem with this uh, firearms thing, and we got problems with our uh, infrastructure, and uh, what are we going to do about that? And hey, what do you think about Congress? And oh, who's that guy in the White House? We don't care. It would drive him fucking nuts. So the power is in our hand. Ignore him. You know. Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. Everything else is hurt. <laughs> You know, but no, he knows how to play the press. He knows how to get the publicity. He knows how to get people talking about him. I mean, we never had this problem with Obama. Obama would go for weeks and you never heard from him. You Not know? at first. Huh? <laughs> Not at first. Well, no. Don't you remember? He did like a, a White House speech like every other day and it was just like, shut up already. Well, I mean, you know, he had to learn the, he had to learn the sweet spot, as it were in the job, but I mean, he wasn't like asking for attention every day of the week. And this guy wakes up in the morning and says, how can I get them talking about me? And he'll write some insane tweet, and then everybody will be talking about the tweet, and uh, MSNBC will go, oh, let's do this as a special. You know, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. But, um, so anybody have any great plans for this weekend? Boy, what an exciting bunch of human beings! Yes, are you are you gonna are you gonna go out for a run? Are you, Patrick? <laughs> I am going to um, try to figure out how to get around Adobe's uh, claim that my software is not genuine. What? Yeah, <coughs> my uh, I have CS six. I haven't gone to the cloud yet. Yeah. Because I haven't seen a reason for it. And I got pop up saying that your um, software is not genuine and they shut it off. Wow. They shut it off. Uh, I tried to use Photoshop earlier today for a project and it popped up. It said it's going to shut down in 60 seconds and it did. So, I, uh, I, you know, I subscribe to them. Uh, I pay fourteen fifty four dollars a month for the whole package, but I mean I use it. You know I use it for for audio here and video and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, uh, but uh, they're they they they're really sticklers. I, I you know and they're assholes. You paid for that, didn't you? You paid for the whole program. I would call them up and I would yell and scream and say, "How dare you tell me that this is illegal?" I paid for. It. I would pay. You paid what three hundred ninety nine bucks something like that for the upgrade. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, listen, thank you all so much. Hey, and by the way, Rob, get your studio fix. Get it going again, will you please? I want to I wanna put a bomb in there. Oh. Oh. Okay, well, then uh, then everything, everything, everything's blown up. You can put it back together again. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, Rob, for joining us tonight. First caller tonight. Uh, of course, uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you so much. Jason, always nice when the, when the lady lets you out. Jeff, thanks for talking to us. And, of course, uh, we always love having Patrick here. What I would love for all of you to do is to give a big wave goodbye, and then I'll wave back because I can do that. There we go. That's what the waving looks like, and uh, here I am. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Let me hang up on him so... Jack Bishop, who comes next with the intersection, will be able to use the line, and you should uh, you should call him. That would be a very nice thing of you to do. I would appreciate it. Okay, please, please. I'm begging. 
I'm very good at baking. Anyway, I'll see you again on Tuesday right after the intersection, uh, the exchange with uh, Damian Chaplin. I'll be on at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.